Today, we will be tackling some common questions that I've received from my patients, as well as from my colleagues. What now after the first dose of COVID-19 vaccination? How much protection do I get after the first dose? The most common question that I get is that doc, whether they can now go out to go mall or go back to work. Are they now protected and can go out without the mask? Another common question I get is, can I still get infected after my first dose of COVID-19 vaccination? But lately, one of my colleagues asked me, can we check my antibody titer status? I just want to be sure that I got the right COVID-19 vaccine. So it's very important that these questions need to be answered so that there will be no misinformation regarding how much protection is the first dose of COVID vaccination? How much protection does it give? Second, is there a way for us to know if the vaccination that we got really made us protected? This is a real case scenario of COVID vaccination in one of the most important countries in the world which has already gotten majority of their population vaccinated, and that's Israel. If you look closely at this graph, 85% of their 16 year old and above population have been vaccinated. And true enough, since the mid-January peak, you can clearly see that with vaccination on board among their, most of their patient population, they now have 98% fewer cases of COVID-19. They now have 93% fewer critical cases of COVID-19 and they now have 87% fewer deaths. It is our hope that this scenario can be duplicated in the different parts of the world. So what's important is with COVID-19 vaccination, life is now close to pre-COVID era in Israel and restrictions are now being lifted. In our country, we only have two available COVID-19 vaccinations at present, that's Sinovac and AstraZeneca. We all know about the controversy of AstraZeneca it's because of the reports of very rare cases of unusual blood clots associated with low numbers of platelets. I've already discussed in my previous video that this is so rare that your risk of developing COVID and blood clots from COVID infection is significantly higher compared to this very rare risk of blood clot. So true enough, this was only permitted to be given to patients above 60 in the Philippines until today. So the Department of Health finally has already approved based on the recommendations from the FDA that the Philippines is now to resume the use of AstraZeneca vaccines for people not only about 60, but also for people below 60. So expect this AstraZeneca now to be available specifically to our healthcare workers who were given the first dose of AstraZeneca in uh, last March. The other vaccine that was given emergency youth authorization by uh, in our country is Sinovac. I said in my previous video that this Sinovac is only approved between 18 to 59, but recently with the recent phase one and phase two trials published in Lancet regarding the efficacy of Sinovac among seniors, this has now been given the approval of our local Department of Health to be given to both seniors and patients with comorbidities. At this time, uh, there are already some uh, vaccines being rolled out to my patients and were already given, as early as last week, their first dose of Sinovac. Now, how effective is Sinovac 
a lot of even my colleagues are still questioning are they deciding right by getting the Sinovac vaccine. First, this real-world data from Chile is about effectiveness. It's no longer in a clinical trial setting, but how effective is Sinovac in preventing COVID-19 infection? So 10 million subjects in this trial, half of whom were fully vaccinated individuals, and the other half were fully were unvaccinated. And their data is very reassuring because of those vaccinated subjects, vaccinated prevented 67%, meaning it prevented the population from becoming symptomatic. But what's important is the 85% prevention of hospitalization or severe cases, and importantly, 80% effective in preventing death. Now, this is real world. This is no longer efficacy trial. So the 80 to 85% data for preventing death and severe disease hmm, is very strong confirmation that Sinovac is a safe and effective vaccine. Mind you, this real world data was done during the time that Chile was experiencing a second wave due to the variant. So in spite of that and high circulation of the virus, they were able to get this significant drop in cases. So that's a very good question. After the first dose of vaccine, how much am I protected? First, you have to remember, it typically takes two weeks after the vaccination for the body to build protection against the virus. Therefore, it is still possible that you will get infected just right before or just immediately after vaccination and then get sick because the vaccine enough, enough to have enough time to provide protection. Meaning, if you got symptomatic for COVID a few days after you got the first dose of Sinovac, do not blame the vaccine, but rather the vaccine was not able to protect you yet against getting the COVID-19. Remember, the first dose that you got now only primes the immune system. The second dose boosts the immune system. So some may experience more side effects on the second dose, but remember, not everybody gets a reaction. So those common questions among my patients with diabetes are frequently asked, whether during te teleconsult or during clinic visits. It is best that after your first dose, you continue to practice the safety protocol. One of my colleagues actually asked whether is there a need for them to check the antibody titer. They want to make sure that the Sinovac vaccine that they got is protecting them against COVID-19. At the present time, antibody testing is not currently recommended to assess the immunity for SARS-CoV-2 following COVID-19 vaccination because the clinical utility of post-vaccination testing has not been established. Second, the antibody tests that we have, which are commercially available, have variable sensitivity and specificity, as well as positive and negative predictive values. What's important is they are not authorized for the assessment of immune responses in vaccinated people. Furthermore, the serologic correlates of protection have not been established, and antibody testing, very important, does not evaluate the cellular immune response, which may play a role in vaccine-mediated protection. What's also important is the antibody testing against nucleocapsid will not detect immune responses resulting from vaccination. What if you did it? The antibody testing was performed and you were not happy with the titer or probably it was zero titer. Additional doses of the same 
or getting yourself a different COVID-19 vaccine are not recommended based on the antibody titer results at this time. If indeed the antibody testing was done, remember this, the vaccination series should be completed regardless of the antibody titer result. You may be tempted to take an antibody test to figure out whether you had developed immunity to COVID after vaccination. Dr. Murphy clearly states that these commercial tests are not good enough, nor are they designed to evaluate vaccine response. Rather, these antibody tests were designed to determine only if there was a prior infection. Again, the formal recommendation, my dear doctors, is not to bother to do any testing after receiving the vaccine doses and to assume that one is optimally immunized two weeks after the last dose. Again, the recent Chile real-world data is very reassuring to me, having received the two doses of Sinovac already. What if I get positive after my first dose of COVID-19 vaccination? As I've told you, it takes two weeks for the body to have enough immune response to fight against the first, the COVID-19 vaccine. But the first dose is just there to prime the immune system. It will, you are still not fully optimized in terms of protecting your body against COVID-19 infection. So it's still possible. So what if you got positive? What happens to your next dose? So based on the recent Department of Health guidelines, it used to be you have to wait for 14 days before you get the second dose, but you need to go ahead and still get the second dose. Now the recommendation is you can get vaccinated immediately after the recovery of COVID-19 or even immediately after the completion of your treatment. This is applicable to both the first dose and the second dose, meaning there's no need for you to wait 90 days and no need to restart the first dose. So that's the recommendation of the Department of Health. If you happen to get the infection after your first dose. Another common question that I have after the first dose is that when patients have symptoms, if they have reactogenic reactions, if they have uh, vasovagal symptoms, during the first dose, can they still get the second dose? For patients who develop local reactions, such as injection site pain or erythema or itch in the COVID arm, 14 days or 40, 11 days post vaccination after the first dose, don't worry. Those are reactogenic reactions and you may still receive the second dose in the opposite arm. Even those patients who develop some systemic reactogenic reactions like fever, headache, or muscle aches and fatigue after the first dose may receive the second dose, no problem. Those, however, who also experience immunization stress-related responses, well, we see patients, I have patients with diabetes who really have these stress anxiety symptoms with vasovagal reactions. And usually this occurs within 15 minutes after the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccination. They feel warm or cold. They have clammy skin. They feel like passing out with lightheadedness or weakness. Now these are vasovagal symptoms and these are not symptoms that will contraindicate you to get the second dose. Yes, go ahead and you may receive the second dose. So overall, these are some of the compilation of questions that I received from patients and colleagues after they received the first dose. So good and congratulations if you already received the first dose. You're on the right path to protecting yourself and to protecting your friends, your family, and the community. Please bear in mind to make sure you check the date of your second dose. As long as you keep yourself safe, keep on your mask, keep on social distancing, and please avoid aircon 
partitioned in closed spaces with other members who are not part of your household. Please continue to keep yourself protected. Again, I'm Dr. Jerry Tan. Thank you and see you soon.